The myths are real. They have an ancient rivalry. There was a war. And they're the last ones standing. Godzilla will come for him. There can't be two Alpha Titans. Who bows to who? Kong bows to no one. The world needs Kong. There is something provoking the into war. I made a promise to protect her. He did the same. We need Kong. The world needs him. These are dangerous times. We need Kong. The world needs him. Two of these classic monsters are going head to head. That's really so exciting. It is a spectacle. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. But the beauty of this particular story is the different storylines on every character. He needs our help. There must be some way to disorient Godzilla. You can look at the film as two separate stories that intersect eventually. Team Kong and Team Godzilla. Each human story is following the monster story as well. We believe that they have an ancient rivalry. The myths say that their ancestors fought each other in a great war. Team Kong, you have Alexander Skarsgård, Kaylee Hoddle, and Rebecca Hall. They're there really to support Kong and his fight with Godzilla. The stakes are high and it's a very risky operation, but we have to go through with it. All right, Matt, how to... down a rabbit hole. On the other end of the journey, we have Team Godzilla, Millie Bobby Brown, Brian Tyree Henry, and Jillian Dennison. And they're basically on this adventure to try find out why Godzilla is attacking. They're trying to put two and two together to figure out why is this going on. They're an amazing team. They complement each other so well. To be a part of that team is great, just trying to figure out how to actually understand Godzilla rather than trying to destroy him. I can't reach it for greatness because I'm built from it. We always saw the movie as being separated between Team Godzilla and Team Kong, and that was exciting to me doing this movie. Team Kong or Godzilla? <laughs> I'm a Kong guy. I don't know, I gotta root for Kong. Hard for me to choose, but as a Japanese person, Godzilla. I like King Kong because he's a giant monkey, and monkeys are cool. 100% Team Kong. I'm not picking sides. You don't really want to pick a side, but you kind of got to pick a side. Team goes a little flat. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my brand new Godzilla vs. Kong trailer video. There's a whole bunch of new footage, a whole bunch more Mecha Godzilla, so I'll break that down too. And obviously, they're talking a little bit more about the history of the MonsterVerse in these new MonsterVerse films. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing all the normal videos that I would do Easter eggs and talking about the ending of the film and the future of the MonsterVerse because they have talked about renewing their deal with Toho. So it does sound like we're going to get more Godzilla and more Kong films in the universe. But just starting with the Mecha Godzilla stuff first. So it opens with a much more prominent version of the Mecha Godzilla scene of him attacking the city and everyone running down the staircase underneath him. But you notice that they've actually polished the visual effects way more. So now you can actually see Mecha Godzilla's chest light up with his energy while he's attacking. There was the digital readout of his systems in that other Apex scene we saw earlier. It gives us readout of his charge level, the power levels. Because he's mechanical, you literally have to charge him like he runs on the biggest batteries you've ever seen. They also seemingly confirmed that the Walter Simmons character is behind Apex or in charge of Apex because you see him walking around inside this big room with all the readouts behind him and the screens that look exactly like this other digital readout of Mechagodzilla. Like whatever's going on in here, this is the room where they're controlling Mechagodzilla. And in this other Millie Bobby Brown scene in one of those clips, you actually see her standing next to this screen and you look behind her and you can actually see a digital readout of Mechagodzilla's tail all lit up. It seems like they're implying that Team Godzilla either breaks into Apex's facility where they're controlling Mechagodzilla or they get captured by Apex and they just wind up inside this control room. 
But they also hype up that the human storyline, Team Godzilla and Team Kong, also kind of flows with the same storyline of Godzilla and Kong going at each other early in the film. Like they spend most of the film fighting each other, but then later it's implied that they work together or somehow help each other take down Mecha Godzilla. And the same kind of thing happens with Team Kong and Team Godzilla. Like they're both kind of working at odds with each other, trying to figure out what's going on because most of the film, they don't know what's happening with Mecha Godzilla. They just think that Godzilla's gone crazy. So Team Kong is trying to help him defeat Godzilla so they can save the world, or so they think. Then Team Godzilla, Millie Bobby Brown's team, is trying to find out what's going on with Apex and the artificial version of Godzilla. But then by the end of the film, they wind up working together just as the two titans, Godzilla and Kong, wind up working together. Depending on what the actual end of the movie winds up being like, no idea how many of these actors would wind up showing up in the next sequel movie, whatever that winds up being. I know because they're hyping up all these ancient War of the Monsters, maybe they're building up to their own version of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame like the Marvel movies, like another brand new War of the Monsters, so to speak. But you've also probably seen some of the promo art for Mechagodzilla too, because even though we get all these different shots of him in these trailers, like you see him, you don't really get the full reveal in any of these scenes. So this is kind of what his design is meant to look like. And you can kind of see what they're trying to do with this modern iteration of the design. Like the classic designs for Mechagodzilla or like Mechagodor or the other Mecha versions of the Titans look more like the original versions with just metal skin on top of them. Whereas the modern redesigns are trying to be a little bit more practical with the way they make them look. So if someone in modern day like Elon Musk wanted to spend a trillion dollars building an artificial version of Mechagodzilla, this is closer to what it might feel like. They've done similar things with the modern redesigns of Kong and Godzilla as well. Like the reason why it seems like Godzilla has so much junk in his trunk is because practically his body has to carry around so much weight. He would literally have to have the world's biggest caboose relative to his upper body. Otherwise, his entire body would just collapse under the weight of itself. That's also why the new version of Kong doesn't spend a whole lot of time walking around totally upright with perfect human posture because he's so top heavy. It doesn't look like he totally skipped leg day or anything like that. He would lope around on all fours like you would expect a primate to. There's a whole bunch of new footage of them capturing Kong and carrying him in that giant web of netting and helicopters to their fake version of the hollow earth underground. Like you see him falling there into whatever facility they've created for him. Him suddenly realizing everything's not quite right, then pulling the biggest Truman show you've ever seen, realizing that it's all fake and just throws the tree right through the barrier. Like, how dare you? We've learned a little bit more about Brian Tyree Henry's character. You might remember him from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. He played Miles Morales' father during that, so his voice might sound familiar. But he also showed up in the Joker movie, too. So you've probably seen him at least somewhere in the last couple of years. But I believe his character is supposed to have formerly worked for Apex and then left the organization just because they seemed like they were too shady. But from the trailer footage, it doesn't seem like he totally understands what's going on with Mechagodzilla. But maybe he's the one that clues them into the idea that Apex was harvesting Titan DNA, just messing with their biology. And I believe the whole idea behind Mechagodzilla is that Apex actually used the carcass from King Ghidorah to develop Mechagodzilla. Like after Godzilla kills King Ghidorah at the end of Godzilla King of Monsters, his carcass is left lying there on the battlefield. I think the theory is that Apex was able to steal one of Ghidorah's heads and just use it to reverse engineer their own Titan, which becomes Mechagodzilla. And the reason why he doesn't look exactly like Godzilla, like it's not an exact copy, is because it's based on Ghidorah's head, not Godzilla's head. So it's also a bit of a reference to Mecha Ghidorah, which is an actual character from the classic Toho films. But in the context of the movie, like the toys, they're going to be selling all the merchandise. It is the Mecha Godzilla character. It just there's a lot of Ghidorah that influences the design of Mecha Godzilla. Who knows if we'll see future mecha versions of the Titans in any of the new MonsterVerse films. I feel like you can only do so many of those in the new films without it starting to feel too ridiculous. Like, where are people getting all the money to create these? It would cost trillions and trillions of dollars to build something like this. And I believe the whole reason for the creation of Mechagodzilla, like the whole reason why Apex is doing this, is because they want to get rid of the Titans, fearing that they're going to destroy the world. Like, they're all about human supremacy, the age of humans. Whereas you have this whole idea of the ancient cultures of the world worshipping the titans as their protectors, like the protectors of the earth, not just humanity. They kind of got into that during King of Monsters, the idea that the titans, Godzilla, particularly bring balance to the world between nature and humans. And I also love the idea that as we've gotten on in the sequels to the MonsterVerse films, they slowly and slowly beefed up the Titan parts of the storylines, like more and more of the movies themselves are about the Titans and less and less about the human storylines. Because who are we kidding here? Godzilla, Kong, they're like the real stars of the movie. 
So the movie's dropping on HBO Max and in theaters on the same day, March 31st. So depending on where you live, you might also be able to go see it in an actual movie theater. So as long as you stay safe, I would recommend you see it on the biggest screen possible just because that was the way the movie was made to be seen on a giant screen. And hopefully after the movie comes out, they'll start talking about the future of the MonsterVerse films. I think they have a broad idea of where they're headed with these, but I would love to see them build up to a big giant War of the Monsters if they can pull that off or at least destroy it. I feel like he would be like their version of Thanos inside this universe. Like who would be the ultimate big bad of the MonsterVerse universe if not him? And even though it's kind of funny to think about it this way, it's technically true. Really, humans are meant to be the actual villain of these MonsterVerse films. But if you have any big questions or any Easter eggs that you noticed in this trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Big reminder too, the Justice League Snyder Cut is being released on Thursday. I'll be doing videos for that. And Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 1 is out on Friday, and I'll be doing videos for that every week too for all the episodes. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Everyone click here for that last really big Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer. And click here for that brand new Spider-Man 3 No Way Home teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.